these are the people that help me and they can definitely help you guys too so please check them all out hey everybody i'm back haven't made a video in a while because i had uh spinal fusion surgery which was brutal there's like an eight inch incision in my back they saw it through the muscle they removed some bone they put in six screws in the plate but i'm feeling good enough to sit up here and make a video today but the last two weeks have been like absolute hell but this is a very quick video today i'm not here to talk about my back it's two tips that do circulate all over the net so i'm not i'm not saying i'm giving you new information but the second one isn't emphasized enough so the first one is is easy but i think people sometimes forget this shake your resin shake your resin very thoroughly before you pour it into your vat resin is made up of a couple different things uh it, it actually does uh, you know start to separate out uh, by weight so if you don't shake it uh it can lead to failures now the second thing is actually i think the most important thing and it's funny because when I, when I look on the Facebook groups, and those of you who know me know I'm lurking on a bunch of groups trying to help people you know, solve problems, and one of the things I think that is talked about a little but not nearly enough is temperature. Your room temperature, and, and for most of us it's going to be the ambient temperature in the room you're printing. I believe from all my experience now for resin printing you know, 24-7 for a year, and also from looking at other people's success and failures, I think you need to be at, you should be at a minimum 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which I think is 22 degrees centigrade. And preferably, preferably, you want your, your, your ambient temperature to be around 74 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. So I think it's about 23 and a half centigrade, let's say 24, 24 centigrade or higher. When, you're, when it's colder than that, you're gonna get unexplained failures. And you might be out there trying to level your bed, you might think you're doing something wrong. You might think a file's bad. You might think your resin's bad. Really, it's temperature. And I think temperature is literally one of the most important factors in resin 3D printing. And that's why I think it doesn't get enough attention. A lot of times when I see failures, I'm going through the groups. Uh, and then when I ask people what the temperature in their room is, people are like, oh, 65 degrees, 68 degrees. And that's too cold. You know, and I know everyone can say, well, I don't have a separate heated room or I can't put a heater by my printer. But here's the thing, if you can't get your temperature up above 72, 73 degrees Fahrenheit, expect failure sometimes, inexplicable failures. So if you're using, say, my pre-support models from Artisan Guild, and you've got everything, your machine, everything's running perfect, but your room temperature is 67, 68 degrees, my thin supports might not print out for you. And then you say, ah, oh, those supports are too thin, or this or that. No, your room temperature is too cold. And I think for some of the resins that I've tested, like the Soraya Blue, and some of the more durable resins, you need a higher temperature than like 76, 77 or higher would be optimal. So that's it. That's at the end of the video. I just wanted to, to emphasize how important it is, the room temperature, the temperature by your printer. You know, even the room might be warm, but if you have your printer in an area where it gets the draft or the air comes in, maybe it's colder there. So make sure that temperature around your printer, 72, 73 degrees Fahrenheit or hotter, and I think you'll find a lot less failures. And I, like I said, I just don't think it's talked about enough. I think it's absolutely critical in 3D printing to make sure your room temperature is high enough. And I know on budget printers, they can't have heaters built in like some of the more expensive printers. And I know people have installed their own stuff. They uh, put it in an enclosure. There's lots of different ways you can solve it if you can't keep a room temperature, you know, you know, 72 or 73 or higher. So anyway, that's it for today. Just wanted to emphasize if you're having these kind of weird failures, inexplicable failures, you don't know what's going on, could just be attributable to the room temperature, the temperature of your resin. But also don't forget, shake your resin very thoroughly before you pour it. It is important that you mix it up, agitate it, and get, and get it nice and evenly balanced. Uh, the components inside need to be thoroughly mixed. Think of it like a salad dressing. You know, if, if you make salad dressing, oil, like oil and vinegar, and then you let it sit out for an hour, you come back, you know, it's, it's two different levels. And when you shake it up, you pour it out, it's fine. But if you just pour it without shaking it, you get all the oil first, I think, or is it all the vinegar? Can't remember. Anyway, so shake your resin, but more importantly, even than that, well, that's important, but make sure your room temperature or your enclosure or whatever is hot enough. That's it for today. Uh, I hope I helped you solve some of your problems. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll be uh, coming back with some more videos shortly. Thanks.